We're gonna start with the Assyrian flag. The Assyrian flag is designed with a white background on which three waving stripes emerge from each corner of a center design, which is in the shape of a four-headed star. At its center, the star encompasses a golden circle representing Shamash, the Assyrian sun god who is believed to give life to all things on earth. The four points of the star symbolize the land and they are bright blue color representing happiness and tranquility. Most importantly, the flag represents for each Assyrian the current struggle our people are enduring for their Christian faith and national identity. As Assyrians, we were the first nation people to accept Christianity. Thus, it is only fitting that the Assyrian Church of the East, who has maintained and protected the language both written and spoken of Assyrians, culture, heritage, and identity, sponsor such an event today where some of our ancient customs will be on display. Queen Puabi. Queen Puabi reigned 2,600 years before Christ. She, Queen Puabi of Ur was known to have two royal harps. There are some, these are some of the oldest instruments ever discovered. Notice Queen Puabi's very distinct and intricate gold headdress with three metal flowers at the top. The headdress was discovered in her tomb when it was excavated. This replica headdress was created by Abe and Melody Aziz. What we know about this beautiful queen comes from the remains and treasures found in the Royal Cemetery of Ur in the 1920s. Queen Yaba, meaning beautiful, was the wife of Tiglath Pileser III, who reigned between 744 to 727 before Christ and is known for her gold tiara and vast gold treasures that were found in 1989 in the royal tombs of Nomorun Palace. With her were buried Queen Benitu and Queen Atalia. Queen Atalia, wife of King Sargon II, who reigned from 721 to 705 BC, was mentioned in inscribed objects found in the Nomorun tombs and was known to have much gold treasures and owned a mirror with a handle shaped like a palm tree. Found also in Nomro was the carved ivory commonly called the Assyrian Mona Lisa of Nomro. Sargon II later moved his capital to Dur Sharukin or Khursaba. Queen Nakia, reigning from 730 to 668 BC, was the wife of King Sennacherib, who reigned from 705 to 681, was the daughter-in-law of Sargon II, mother of Isarhaddon, and grandmother of Ashurbanipal. Her king Sennacherib is known for having have entered and created the hanging gardens of Nineveh with massive aqueducts and the invention of the Archimedes screw. Lebali Shara. Queen Labali Sharat was the wife of Ashurbanipal, king of Assyria, king of the world. He was the last of the great kings of the Assyrian Empire. This strong and educated ruler of Assyria was known for the Ashurbanipal Library of Cuneiform Writings, one of the first libraries of the known world, and for being an ambitious warrior. This relief, commonly called the banquet scene, was originally found in the Ashurbanipal Palace in Ninue and will soon be on display at the Getty Museum in Los Angeles for three years on loan from the British Museum. Our last Assyrian queen was a breathtaking beauty. She epitomized elegance and royalty. She possessed the undeniable essence that would lead to legends being told about her throughout the world for centuries to come. Much of what is known about this queen belongs to the world of lore and legends. However, 
History states that she was a real figure and the Assyrian wife of Shamshi Haddad V. Her existence is verified by the inscriptions of the monument or stela after her name. Yet when her powerful Assyrian king died and the prince heir Adad Narari III was still too young to rule, this beautiful and elegant queen had to transform herself to maintain the great Assyrian kingdom. After her husband's death, she reigned from 811 BC to 806 BC. She would have thus been in control of the vast Assyrian Empire at the time. What is more amazing is that she was the first female monarch of the world that has known. Almost 800 years prior to the reign of Cleopatra of Egypt. This queen achieved remarkable fame and power in her lifetime and beyond. According to contemporary records, she had considerable influence of, at the Syrian court. This would explain how she was able to maintain the throne after her husband's death. It was not common for women to possess positions of authority in the Assyrian Empire, and to have a woman ruler would have been unthinkable unless that person had enough power to take and hold it. Many depictions of the Assyrian ruler are of her riding into battle. These portrayals stem from her successful campaigns she waged against her enemies and the novelty of a woman ruling such a great empire. Not only did this queen become a new ruler of Assyrian Empire, she became a fierce warrior and led her powerful military in its campaigns. <laughs> Who was this legendary Assyrian warrior queen known to take the chariot and lead her military into battle? She was none other than Queen Samaramis or Shamu Rammat, meaning my name is exalted. She is best known to Assyrians today as Shamiram. I present to you Shamiram, Queen of Assyria. <laughs> Big round of applause for our queen.